What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with an amazing human being named Donna Bond. Donna, how are you? I'm great, Jay. Thanks for having me. So good to be here. It's awesome to have you. Donna and I had a very spirited discussion off air, (laughs) the likes of which we will not talk about, but uh, it's very good to know that she is one of us, a child of the light. So let me give you guys her bio. Um, She's a spiritual advisor, a business and life coach, and she is author of Original Wisdom, which is Harness the Power of the Authentic You, Supporting Individual Transformation of Consciousness. That's why she's here, of course. Donna assists clients across the globe. Um, to evolve to new heights of meaningful success, personal fulfillment, and spiritual aliveness. I love that. Using the principles and practices of spiritual psychology. So Donna, I have not read your book. I see it in the background. Uh, I really appreciate you being with us today. Again, I know you are, as I call one of us, a child of the light. Uh, It's an honor to have you. Let me ask you, as I kind of do now on the Jay Campbell podcast, and for the purposes of this timeline. It is Thursday, December 16th, when we're doing this podcast. We find ourselves in a world of whatever you want to define it. As I like to say, it's where we place our consciousness, but there is a lot of turmoil in this third dimensional, you know, physical realm of existence at the current moment. Where do you see humanity going to, and again, I know this is an opinion question, you know, in 2022 and beyond. My God, Jay, what kind of a question is that? Where do I see humanity going? I have to put my guests <laughs> on the spot. This is the Jay Campbell podcast. Oh, my word. I have no idea. I have no idea. True, And that's the truth. You know, here is like a really big awareness that I had uh, not long ago that I think all of humanity is on the hero's journey. And I think, you know, to some extent, we're playing a big damn game with ourselves. We're all on the hero's journey and we're playing out this epic adventure mm-hmm. of, you know, seismic proportions. And we bring ourselves to the edge of the cliff again and again and again. And we close our eyes and we hold our breath and we take a leap to. I don't know, test our resolve to see how strong we really are and how we really can pull ourselves through anything. And, you know, I I know this sounds a little bit crazy and this, you know, can certainly feel controversial, but I think from the soul's perspective, we come for it all. Right. We come for all of it. Because, right, when we're in the dimension of spirit, we're in the ethers, we're in the nothingness, there's nothing. Mm. So we get here in this very physical, super polarized, you know, experience, and we're here for it all. It's beautifully said. As I like to say, 
from a soul level, we're here for evolution and growth and no decision or choice that we make is wrong, right? Because yeah. we're all walking the same path, you know, yeah. back to perfection. Some of us are walking faster than others and no rate of speed is better than another. It's literally that simple. Um, I love what you just said. You know, I, I would actually even take it even a step further because in, in the hero's journey, the true evolution and growth comes at the dark night of the soul, right? So this is, we are. <laughs> this is the collective dark night of the soul. But as you also are aware, being the spiritual person and uh, an advisor that you are, many people are in resistance to this, right? Because they had their, as I like to call it, their life in a sandbox. And that sandbox was very orderly and defined, you know, think of it as like a cubicle job and everything about their life was rehearsed and scripted. And it was just every day is the same. I'm very rarely going to change. And now we have what happens to us again, whatever you, however you define it in 2020. And a lot of people were disrupted and in this disruption, because they lack coping mechanisms or they lack what I would call the resolve to go within, right. To have some form of contemplative, meditative, introspective, grounding type work, mindfulness training, however you want to refer to it. Uh, haywire has happened. And so you have tons of people who are in distress. Obviously there's job you know, loss and there's income loss and there's sickness and disease and obviously death, physical body death is everywhere. Right. So the people who, who have been doing these quote unquote inner work, having a mindfulness practice, um, you know, weren't as affected as the people that don't. And so to me, this is the great chance or the great opportunity for all of us to truly reflect on what matters and what is meaningful again to us and, and to hopefully seek these questions from within. Because as you know, Donna, society, you know, whatever you want to call the external you know, the, the, the narrative is to push to the external, to give up your power to the external, whatever it is, the doctor, the news, your job, you know, everybody wants to the government. Yeah, yeah. The, oh God. Right. I mean, God, <laughs> don't even get me going. But right. I mean, it's essentially an externalization of what you intuitively and not, you know, literally natively have internally. And so until you, again, learn to recognize that that power is within you, uh, we find ourselves in the place that we are now. So I think that really is the difference. And I, you know, we, we have a bunch of bullet points that we're going to discuss, but I kind of want to just say this to you and get your feedback. I see the whole entire planet right now is bifurcated in either resonance or dissonance. And obviously resonance would be defined as like you wake up in the morning and you're still happy and go lucky and joyful and you're creative and you embrace whatever it is that you do on a day-to-day -day basis with gusto, or you're on the other side in dissonance and you're in fear and you go to bed at night, worried about dying of COVID, whatever fearful attribution, insert it. But that's kind of where we are. Do you kind of, do you see the same you know world yeah. that I see? Well, I, I definitely do. I, I mean, what's so interesting, it's like there's two tracks there's right. two completely different realities yeah. that yeah. are unfolding and right. i think we all have to make an internal choice of which reality we're going to place ourselves in right. and i know people who might be trapped in the other reality you know can hear something like that and be feel really activated or triggered like you know well how the f am i going to get into that other reality right and that's why i do the work that i do um you know, as you were talking earlier about all of the discord that is everywhere on the planet, I am reminded by a quote uh, from Louise Hay. Oh, yeah. And I just feel like this so sums it up. She said, you can't clean the house if you don't want to look at the dirt. Right. So that is what is happening. And, you know, we hear this sort of cliche thrown around in the spiritual communities like, you know, it's coming up for healing. Well, it is coming up for healing, right? It's coming up so that we can make a decision about how we relate to things in a different way. Because in the past, for, you know, eons of time, we have related to things with force, with againstness, with... Right pushing, shoving, driving, right? And this was totally how I lived my life 
100%. Like I yep. grew up uh, in a home with two immigrant, you know, descendants from Italy. And it was about hard work and sacrifice, right? right? You pulled right. yourself right. up by your bootstraps and you pushed your way through. Right. Life and is hard. This, <laughs> life is hard. Oh, my God, right? That was, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> Same thing. So the the journey here is what, what really opened my eyes in such a huge way was the opportunity to be gentle, to be soft, to be compassionate, to be inclusive, to be collaborative. And those were ways that I was not taught, that just wasn't part of my psyche, it wasn't part of my makeup. And so the way in which I can relate, first and foremost, to myself, right, we relate to myself in those ways, then it has the outflow, the outpouring, whatever you want to call it, that reverberates back out into my experience, and then is reflected back to me, and you've got that, I see the uh, the infinity symbol in front of me, right? Like it goes out and it comes back and it goes out and it comes back. And we don't realize or recognize that. And so we keep sending out the shit that we don't want and it keeps coming back. But it, we've got to be the center point of, of making the change and making a different choice of what we're going to send out so that we can get something different back. I don't know. I'm totally rambling. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not, you're not rambling. When Jay Campbell is not speaking, I'm in the presence of greatness and you are mm. speaking very powerfully, very profoundly. I'm listening. My dog is listening too. Um, no, everything you said. So I like to think, I don't even think it, it's a knowing now. It's like a cosmic awareness of like the beings of resonance are drawing each other to, towards each other. You ended up on my show today. There's no coincidence. It's pure synchronicity. I get a lot of people. I say this now, not afraid to say this. I get a lot of people that want to be on a podcast with me, which is a true blessing. And I reject 95%. So when I, and again, it's not because I don't want to have other people. I just literally don't have the time. And I've talked, I've, you know, I've been, I've had a podcast for six years and I've spoken about the same things in a lot of ways. But when I see, you know, the media companies that send me, you know, very interesting people. And I see a lot of amazing, interesting people. And again, I reject 95% of them. There has to be a connection energetically for me when I re read someone's name and I read someone's bio and I read something and you immediately stuck out. I also have a, an amazing uh, assistant named Carolyn Chang, who's a very soulful, resonant being. and She can sense it too. And we're very aligned. So again, what you just said is profound you and I share very similar upbringings. You know, uh, I'm also from an Irish, Italian, German immigrant background, oldest of nine children. My mom actually gave birth to 10. I was the one right after he died. His name was Christopher J. They named me J. Christopher. He died, by the way, of sudden infant death syndrome. But that's part of like who I am, right? So like a lot of the things you just said, you know, very much impacted me. You, you talked about being gentle and inclusive. I'll share this story. My dad was such a maniac, still is to this day. God love him. He's 76 years old and he is just a survival programming being highly intelligent, highly achieved, amazing, you know, retired, multimillionaire, all the things, checks all the spots, you know, except hasn't risen, you know, above that line, but that's, you know, where he's at. And the, the, the truth is, is that he taught me to be reactive in everything that I ever did. And the story, which I want to share with my audience, and of course you, is it's profound. I mean, I, it, it, when I think about it, sometimes it moves me, moves me to tears. So I won't have tears today, but uh, Maybe. My, dad, my dad would be so reactive and so crazily overreactive that when something broke in our house as a kid, he would literally go, Jesus, Ellen, uh, Martha, which is my mom's name, hot cloth towels like hot cloth towels. Like we have to clean this up immediately. It's a disaster, danger, DEFCON 5. 
And so when I was 23 years old and living on my own in Los Angeles, California with my, at the time, my girlfriend, actually, I think I was 24. I dropped living in a one bedroom apartment in Pasadena, California. I dropped a glass by myself, no dogs, no kids, just me and her. It broke. And I completely went insane. Now, obviously I have no control over my reaction because again, and I'm taking full responsibility, but I'm admitting that my programming was based on that. And it was the most amazing thing that my girlfriend at the time, God bless her, shout out to Kelly Hinesley, deconstructed the event and said, dude, what are you doing? I mean, we have a shop back. We can pick up all those glass shards. It's not damaging anything. It's it's going to be over. I mean, so she was. Able to so I'm tuning in emotionally, like to where you were then, Jay. I still feel like the tenderness around this and the revelation that you experienced yeah. when she was yeah. able to open that door for you. Yeah, literally. Oh. I mean, it was. I mean, it was. It, it was so it was, sweet. It was so unbelievable, though, to like hear her. Yeah. In a non-reactive state to observe, uh, as you said, you know, to lean in, to feel what she was saying to me and then to realize that I didn't have to be that way. And again, I, I had no idea. I know. Right? I was and how do we, so that, that right there, I had no idea. I right. mean, I guess that's why you and I are out sharing the message yes. that we're sharing, right? Yeah. It, it's like we, all of us, we grow up in this framework, right? Yes. We grow up in this framework and we're inside the four walls of our framework and it's familiar in there. We understand what it looks like in there. Even though we might not be comfortable, we know our way around in there. So we honestly believe that there isn't anything else. But when we step on the other side of the framework, Oh my God, there's a whole world. There's a whole other way of seeing and being and living and experiencing life filled with joy and aliveness yeah. and all of the yumminess that we're all hypnotized into believing that we're out there chasing, right? We're out there running, trying to get it. Yeah. When. Do it. Doing, 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 instead of being doing, 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 doing. Yep. Yeah. At, at my, my friends at the university of Santa Monica, they, ca they called me Donna the doer. I mean, I get it. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see and talk to you soon. It really is part of the voyage in the physical reality. I, I'm reading a, a profound book right now called Consciousness is What I Am from Joseph Goldsmith. I'm sure you're familiar mm -hmm. with some of his works. I mean, it's just such a profound book. You know, and again, a lot of these books are lost, right? They're from the 50s and the 40s. And these beings were like, so, you know, whatever you want to call it, incended, ascended. I mean, they're just awareness was at a cosmic, you know, true, the, they were truly imbued with the light of being, right? The spirit of God inside them. And they were able to just impart such wisdom. But, uh, you know, that that's the key. It's the, the key is to getting to a place of awareness where you do understand that everything that you're sensing in the physical reality is illusion. Yeah. And the only thing that you are at base essence is truly consciousness. You know, yeah. as Hawkins or Walter Russell would say, you're, you're literally worrying electrons, vibrating particles and standing waves of energy, you know, for people. And I've said this before on my podcast now, so I think most people get it, but you're like an energetic orb of plasma, you know, that like UFO experiencers or contactees talk about, they see these, these orbs, these glowing yellow or orange orbs or whatever. That's what we really are, you know, at base essence. And if you become really practiced at your meditative or your, 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 your silent, your internal 
still small voice work, you know, you can attain that level of beingness or awareness from that. You can also attain it uh, from doing 5-MeO DMT and being blasted into the field of what you said earlier, which I love is everything and nothing. Mm. And you're in the void of pure consciousness, which again is the frequency of source consciousness, God, whatever you want to call it, you know, true universal conscious awareness. Um, so there are ways to attain this. And obviously more and more people are doing that now, but uh, Donna, it's such an honor to talk to you. You have so many bullet points and I actually want to go through each one of them now. Cause I know if this is going to be a profound conversation for people. Well, I have to just say one thing, what I always say about this, I say uh, we're living in a hologram. Exactly. We're right. living in a hologram. And like, if people would just begin to get that. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Well, 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 to that point, to that point, because that's, I'm glad you went there. Um, you know, Neville Goddard, mm -hmm. you know, he talks about creating heaven on earth right now. Yeah. It's not a place of wanting or hoping or desiring yeah. or woulda, coulda, shoulda. It's stating right that here. frequency right now and then acting in such a way. And as I always say, and I've even done videos on YouTube that have been deleted about this, like, you know, people want to debate that we're in a simulated reality, a holographic construct. If we weren't, we couldn't create our reality, right? Because if it was a fixed chain elliptical path in the second or whatever you call this, the third dimension of physical beingness, you couldn't actually create your reality as an individual because it would be, like I said, a fixed chain path. So each individual human soul has the ability to create their reality in this uh, uh, universal universe of seeming or simulation. It's, it's a quantum physics thing, but it really is simple to understand when you realize that every single day you wake up in the morning, you have a choice through free will and intention to create whatever it is that you want. And I always say this, and this is the biggest construct block for most people. Why would you ever intend negative? Yeah. Because you're creating a boomerang, a thought boomerang and it, again, it's always conscious, even if it's negative or positive into the universe that is going to come back and serve you from a karmic standpoint, no matter what. And I, I think of all the things I did in my 20s and 30s, you know, without awareness of it and how it served me in my late 30s and in my early 40s to get to this place now, you know, and this place now is like, dude, I'm so grateful. Like all I have a great quote. I have a great quote. The Hi. former uh, chancellor of the University of Santa Monica, John Roger, he said, it's foolish not to win in your own fantasy. Right. It's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Everything that you've done is an opportunity for growth and advancement, but you have to get to a place where you define it as such. And as you know, the people that are vibrating in victimhood always to find their story, their self-talk in negative fashion, you know? And as you said, I was trained in that world too. I mean, all the way up until I was 41 or 42, I blamed somebody else for everything yeah. that happened to me. Negative Don't you positive. think we've hit the tipping point though? Like I forget when it was the harmonic convergence or the 2012, right. like right. I, I can't keep track of all that stuff, but <laughs> I feel like Right. The vibration on the planet right now is one of which that we are on such an accelerated path. I mean, yeah. I literally in the work that I do totally. am witnessing people waking up in front of my eyes. Totally. Totally. Literally in the in front of my eyes. I am Some watching them up. get downloads and have Some people, Some people, I didn't mean to cut you off. I mean, a hundred, this is a harmonic convergence. It, 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 some people are waking up at a rate that they can't even understand that they're waking yeah, up, Donna. Right. Like yeah. they're asking you questions or saying things that are so mind blowing. I, I, I can't say what it is, but my brother, who's a year younger than me, a very successful, accomplished guy, but you know, he's probably in the two, 300 range. He said something to me yesterday in a phone call and we rarely communicate. He was calling me to talk about my mom, which she has health problems. And he said something that blew my mind. I said, Sean, what did you just say? And he goes, oh, you know what I said. And it was like a soul communicating to a soul outside of the third dimensional boundaries, you know, that we like to label on each other. I mean, I was so, I, I'm not kidding you. I almost dropped my phone. I was in my backyard. 
and it was like at the end of the day and it was in between calls. And I, I, I mean, I was, it was definitely a resonant soul to soul. Yeah. His soul spoke through his physical third dimensional body. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I was like, I mean, like I said, he never, ever made that statement. I can't say it on the show, but he had never made that statement ever. And it was like, what? And that's proof of what you're saying that the energy, like I say, I, I just, this is my woo woo-ness. I say the energy from the central spiritual sun is washing this planet right now. And if you are above the line of integrity, you are now having all of these latent DNA circuits, entrons, whatever you want to call them, their scientific names for them. They are firing on. And you are now like, Whoa, wait a minute. I don't understand what's going on. Many people who are very attached to the third dimension of money and materialism and things and all that stuff are just literally having reality apocalypses now, complete reality apocalypses. And, you know, it's a great thing. It's an amazing blessing for people like you and I who are already awake. And again, I don't want people to think that like I'm better when I'm saying that I'm awake. It's just that when you're, you know, again, aware as the best statement of what's going yeah. on. Yeah. It's cool when other people start to catch on. Right. It is. And right. It's available to, to everyone because we are all one energy. Exactly. We are all one living, yes. breathing, moving, dynamic organism. Yes. That is life itself. We are individualized expressions of this one energy. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. We're unified at a holographic soul, a fractal of the holographic soul level. Okay. You have a lot of amazing points I want to talk about. I'm just going to go right for the big go gusto. You have raising your consciousness to transform your life. Now, you and I did not know each other before today. Uh, maybe you are somewhat familiar with me. Obviously, I familiarize yourself, myself with your book and your bio. I have not read your book, but I'm definitely going to read your book. And so is my wife. Um, but when I came back from Peru in 2019, it the energy and the frequency of the Sacred Valley of Peru, Cusco, that whole area, you know, it's nine to 10,000 feet above sea level. And then I went through you know, the Andes and I went through the Ataplano and I was at Lake Titicaca and I was at Lake uh, Humantai at 20,000 feet, right? The energy up there is literally divine from another world, you know, however you want to label it. I came back with this total knowing that it was all about raising human consciousness. It did not matter what I was doing. You know, I was a certified expert in hormones and health optimization and fasting. And I got all these reviews and people know me. I mean, it was like, dude, I don't care. It's about raising human consciousness. And so that guy became the raise your vibration guy. And it was like, damned hell or high water. If you don't follow me, you don't want to, you don't, you don't aspire to any of this. You used to follow me for something else, but now you can't catch on or whatever. That's okay. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. Th this is literally about human consciousness and advancing human consciousness. And there's nothing else. Cause if we don't focus on that, else. but if we don't focus in on that, we are going to literally destroy ourselves again and reboot. Uh, who knows how many times it's happened on. I mean, we know Atlantis, we know Lemuria. I mean, who knows there's it's all covered up, but bottom line, I love that point because you get it. Th there isn't anything else. I don't even talk to family members, friends, or anything if they don't get it. I, and again, it's not a judgmental thing. It's just like, hey, man, if you're not part of the solution. But how do we the invite them in it, right? How do we invite people into it? You send because, them love. Right. Energetically. That's what you do. You literally send them love energetically. And when they're ready. When they're ready. They're going to come in. But what I, and, and this, is, this is my my opinion, and I, my wife and I are constantly debating this. If you spend time energetically, and you're at the four and five range, and you're down here, family functions, family get-togethers, again, the Hawkins books, Walter Russell books, there's others. They talk about you know sympathizing with lower energy fields, and what happens. No good comes about it. So to guard your energy and to be aware of your energetic field, you have to distance yourself 
by protecting your field, but again, sending them resonance because resonance from an energy standpoint overcomes dissonance always. It literally disarms it. It transmutes it. So when you do that and you're aware of that, and again, very few people are aware of this. Most people want to sympathize. They don't empathize, totally different. They want to sympathize. And this is when they drop their energy fields. And now all of a sudden they invite in the same problems. It's the crabs in a bucket. And, and so you have to be cautious of that. That's all I'm saying. I don't know if I like totally line up with exactly what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I want to throw this into the mix. Did you read um, Supermind? Norm Rosenthal, maybe? No, I haven't read So that. it was all about transcendental meditation. It was like the benefits of transcendental sure. meditation. And there sure. was a study that they had in that book where they sent large masses of people into high crime areas and had them meditate. And, yep. and that raises the field of all of them. It raises the field of all of them and they watch the crime rate go down. Yep. So right. um, I was home for Thanksgiving a couple weeks ago, Connecticut, where I grew up. Right. And um, let's just say it's not a 500 level field in your house. <laughs> And in the past, here's what I learned. Here's what I learned. In the past, um, you know, I think we have the ability to throw around our energy more than we're willing to admit and more yep. than maybe we're uh, responsible for, right? We want to take responsibility for our whole self when we're on this path of consciousness. Yes. And you know, it's great when we start doing the mental stuff and we take responsibility for the emotional stuff. And we take responsibility for the physical stuff. But what if we start taking a greater level of responsibility for the energetic stuff? And oh. I have a challenging family member whom I love, right? To the end of the earth, love yeah. her. Yeah. And in the past, we have always been like in a duking match for whatever, one reason or another. Sure, sure. And my experience this year was really different. And what I did differently was I stayed in my own lane energetically and I didn't want anything to be different. I didn't want anything to be different. I didn't want her to be different. I didn't want the situation to be different. And I recognized in the past, like when I'm holding on to my position, right? Like I think you need to go get therapy or I think you need to wake up, fix your life, do whatever. When I hold that position for someone else, there's no possible way that they can meet me there no. ever. There's no... no Right. Because because I'm on one side of the spectrum. Again, right. we're like tangled up in the in the polarity. Right. So how do we come into the middle? How do we come into the middle? We have to like drop all of our stuff. We have to lay right. down our sword. Right. And this is a place that I have intention that humanity can get to. Right. 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 Both and. We can see it differently and we can both be heard and mm -hmm. seen in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm willing to open my mind, my thoughts to where you've been, to the struggles you've had, to the way that you see the world, right? Like your dad, you know, he is a product of his upbringing and you what? were a product of, of your upbringing. And we all get to that place where we can make a choice or we have an angel swoop in that says, Hey, it's just a broken glass. Right. 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 So you have, there's a lot you said there, a lot to unpack. Uh, one of my spiritual mentors is a guy by the name. who's a young guy. He's younger than us. His name is Julian Ponzin. And he says that and it's very true and, and it's very difficult for people to accept this. It's an act of spiritual violence to attempt to enlighten make aware or provide any insights into people who are less awakened. And, and, you know, I, that was something that I became really aware of about six years ago. And up until then I had this, you know, Jay Campbell has this huge heart. I want to help everybody. I want to go out there. You know, I'm willing. Yeah. 
to share my energy and all those things. So that that that's one thing that I, I, I learned and I now take that with me. And so that goes back to what you were just saying about energy guarding and managing energy. So back to the house thing. It's one thing. It, okay, so this is where I agree with you. If you can walk into a home with a lot of people who are of all different vibrations and you can master being the neutral observer who is unattached, yeah, then you can absolutely by default energetically raise the field of everyone in the room and that yep. we know that for a fact that's a that's an energy conservation law of resonance all that stuff is involved the differentiation and i'm not debating you about this i'm just saying that you know i want to make sure that everybody's aware of this is if you are attacked and i mean you know or whatever it is that somebody wants to talk about are you you're not i mean when you're in that situation it's like I said, you have to pr uh, uh, present neutral and you have to be able to withdraw in a tactful, strategic, loving and resonant way rather than engage. Because again, when you engage, you lower your field because that energy in any kind of sympathetic way will reduce you. And so the master can empathize but can also, like I would say, not yield, but withdraw very tactfully and strategically so that there is no harm, no foul. And that is very difficult. And that's what, you know, in the last year, especially, and I know you can probably relate to last year around the holidays when people were scared shitless about everything. There are still many people, as we said in the very beginning of the show, who are in that, you know, fear bifurcation and anything related to being around other people where, you know, they're not masked or any of that stuff is literally a, uh, you know, an issue. And so, you know, in, in those type of settings, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to become a master or to maintain again, that unattached neutral it, observation it, stance, you know what I'm saying? So it, that's it, what I'm, I'm it is possible and it is, it possible. is. And, and you know what too? And I, I mean, I love and appreciate the word master and mastery all day yep. long and, we ebb and flow. Yeah, we ebb and exactly. flow. And, exactly. and even even us, you know, we want to call ourselves the high vibers. We exactly. have our peaks and our valleys, and oh, we yeah. have our ups and our downs. And oh, yeah. and you know why? Because totally. we're freaking human. We're human. We're human. Exactly. And we're it's in part these of the experience. Bodies. We vibrated yeah. into this. Yep. Yeah. We chose this. We literally chose this. We we agreed to this before incarnation. Everything. Yeah. I mean, like your business partner, your wife, your husband your brother, your best friend, your sister. I mean, all of this is like you said, at the very beginning, the parents. we chose this. I, I swear to God regarding the parents. I mean, it wasn't until, you know, I read the power of now back in 2013 or 2014. I don't remember. And at the end, you know, he's got that exercise to send to your parents. And I sent that to my parents and they literally thought that I had lost my mind. Yeah. They couldn't speak to me for months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and again, that's fine. You know, you know, but it was literally at that point in my life, I was 43 or 44. I don't remember. Actually, I think it was 42 or 43. Maybe it just turned 43. And I was like, you know, I was starting to realize like, wow, you know, I'm changing things for the better. I'm transforming who I am at a, as a state of being, but my parents are not on board, but that's okay. But that's right. Okay. And they're still not on board. Right. And that's, and that's still okay. okay. Exactly. Yeah. It's still yeah. okay. It's still okay. And that's where, again, you know, because we're clearly not masters, you know, the more you learn, the less you know, but like the, totally. the, reality, <laughs> the, the reality is, the reality is, is that knowing and maintaining the energy field are sometimes two different things. And as you said, the practice is every day. How can I remain in a high energy field? regardless of what happens to me, right? Because all I can control is my reaction. And you can either react out of fear or respond out of love. And responding out of love takes the effort of checking in. Does this yeah. serve me to choose to do this? And again, anyone can do it, Donna. We all can choose to respond out of love. And that is what takes energy and it takes thought patterns and it take it, it takes silence well it takes, it takes doing 
too, right? So um, I'm a student of A Course in Miracles. And mm -hmm. in the beginning of A Course in Miracles, you know, it says we don't aim to teach the meaning of love. We aim to remove the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. And so we've got to remove the blocks. And the blocks right. are in the form of these misunderstandings and these misinterpretations and these misidentifications of our belief systems that we all grew up on. Right. 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 And I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. You know, just being an example of it and uh, letting people self-initiate into it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we can't push it. Right. Um, we can't force it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think all of the, the many different levels that we have in all of this are part of the curriculum. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with Ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. One of your points is, which is beautiful, is soul-hearted living. I love that. Is the integration of your humanity and your original wisdom. So I like to say, coming to a place of awareness or you know, understanding, I, I'd say the Christ of your own consciousness, you know, the light of being is the aligning of your soul and the integrity of your soul with the awareness of your ego so that everything creates harmony. And we can get there again. I think it is my opinion, but through the, the simplest way is again, focusing on an inner work practice, you know, ritualistically focusing on doing it, practicing the presence and doing it every single day, you know, for, you know again, from hell to high water, whatever happens in your life, there's always five to 10 minutes a day that you can take to just shut off and to tap that, you know, higher soul, that higher consciousness, the higher self, the super conscious wisdom, whatever it is you want to call it. But you have to, in my opinion, learn to connect with that because that is the light of being. That is the awareness of love, the, the presence, as you said it. And man, it's, it's so beautiful when you do make that every single day of your focus. And I always tell people, you know, cause they'll always say to me, you know, the simple question is like, Jay, I don't understand what it means to raise your vibration. Can you explain it? And I always say from a simplest solution standpoint, it's like whatever you do every day of your life, do it at your highest and best capacity unattached out of love for the greater good of everyone. Right? Like that's kind of how I say it. I have different ways, but that's the simplest way to say it. But like, if you're doing an inner work practice, and you're truly desiring to connect, you know, in that way, it will come Donna. There's no, you know, yeah. lotus position, 45 minutes sitting there. It, it, that's not the way it works. It's just a focus and a desire to get to that place, that connection to the light of being Christ of your own consciousness. Well, what I hear you describing forever. is intention, exactly. right? Like having the intention and holding the intention. And when we right. hold the intention of something, then we've now entered into a co creative process right. with the divine. Right. And so when we include the divine, merely by setting our mindset to invite the divine in, aka holding the intention, yeah. then uh, we say in spiritual psych psychology, spirit meets us at the point of action. Yeah. Right. And we've engaged in that co creative process. And unfortunately, our ego mindset wants to, you know, believe we can do it all on our own. And we believe that we are all on our own. Yeah. And so we buy into this limited experience in our life because we think, oh, I got to do it all. It's all on me, right? Like I got to bear all the burdens. I'm the only one. And we do that perhaps because 
we've never tested out the waters with the deeper mingling into holding an intention to have the universe as my partner. Right. Test right. it out. Don't take our word for it. Right. Right. That's exactly right. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we are, as you said, we're in amazing times, right? Like, again, my observation is now from a guy who is trained to be class half empty. You know, Jay, you prepare for the worst. So if it happens, you got nothing to worry about. I mean, my dad literally trained me for that, right? You know, he had zero understanding of quantum physics. But, you know, now, now you get to a place of like, again, where you place your consciousness is what you're going to get. It's literally that simple. So, you know, you could place your, you know, like in the business sense. And the next point, by the way, is I love this harnessing your higher purpose as an entrepreneur. I want to hear, I want you to talk about that, but like the economy in the United States and globally is starting to unwind now. You know, we've, we've spread a bunch of fake money around for two years to, you know, help through the pandemic or whatever it was. And now it's running out and now we have massive inflation. We have all these things, but my point is you can place your consciousness on it's going to be a collapse. What do I do? Or you can place your consciousness on, you know what? It doesn't matter. I have enough. I always have what I want or what I desire because I place my consciousness on that awareness. So it's interesting right now because in my opinion, we are about to experience a seismic shift economically. And the people, as always in history, as you know, thousands of years of whatever, as the timelines have been hijacked, and yes, we don't know the timelines, but the reality is, is that it's always this way that people in all times succeed because of where they place their consciousness. So I'd like your ideas or thoughts behind, again, the harnessing your higher purpose as an entrepreneur. Well, it's kind of a mixed bag of many things that we've talked about today. First of all, I think purpose our purpose, all of our purposes, is the expression of our, tr our true self, our original wisdom, is this higher vibrational love that we are, or aka our soul, right? So as we bring in more of that energy, we bring in more of our soul, it's expressing out in the world. It doesn't have to just be as an entrepreneur. It doesn't have to be in our business, right? It's in, it's in our relationships. It's in uh, our, our families. It's in everything that we do and everywhere that we go. It's bringing in that way of being, which is more of our original wisdom, which is the love that we are, right? It's, it's getting that into the mix and it's expressing out in the world as that. And like expressing out in the world as that comes with the ego and the personality that is Donna, that is Jay, that is all of these beautiful, different, individualized expressions of right. this one energy that we all are, right? And there is not two of us that are exactly the same. Right. And in that, there is such beauty and such grace and such divinity. And we belittle it and we make it wrong and we repress it. And all of the things that we do to try to, you know, have sameness and belonging because we've bought into some limited idea of our experience in life when really can't we celebrate our uniqueness? And if we celebrated everybody's individuality and uniqueness with more reverence, then we give everybody the freedom for their true expression, how they've been created as a drop of the divine. Beautiful. You say a lot of amazing things. Thanks. I'm just a channel. I'm just, I'm just tapping into that higher stream of consciousness.
Mm -hmm. And yeah. Beautiful. Um, we all have that ability, as you know, we can all access that at any given moment in time, but first there has to be the desire. And then of course the will, and then the intention to take action. And I think where most people get stuck and obviously this is changing by the day now, especially as people really truly are becoming awakened on a minute by minute basis is, you know, having the, the, the gumption to take action, right? Because it's not easy in today's day and age to want to do what you truly desire versus what the ego tells you is the comfortable, you know, like I said, that sandbox image of the blank salary, the blank benefits, the, the, you know, the mortgage, the kids in college, you know, the second home, whatever it is. But I, as I see it, you know, we'll, we'll end and I'll get your thoughts on this. You know, the third dimension and all of its constructs, corporations, all that stuff, everything that's beholden to this hierarchy of needs where we're not sharing resources, we're not, again, working in a truly uh, advanced conscious way is unraveling. And everyone who is beholden to those third dimensional constructs and systems is going to unravel with them. But as you know, from entropy comes creation. So what is being created is what I call the golden age or the new earth. But you're going to have to, meaning everybody watching the show and you and me included, have to adapt and pivot as these systems implode. And they are imploding. I mean, we're watching it right now in real time, right? Mm -hmm. So so my thoughts to you and, you know, to end the show, um, what is your actionable advice to people who are, you know, working on their on themselves right now to navigate you know what is to come and say 2022 and beyond take a pause take a pause take a breath and go within instead of lashing out right right it's like it's it's calling ourselves out on the reactivity it's calling ourselves out on the behavior that we know is not serving. It, it, it's like we we want we want our ego mind to support the mission of the soul. Mm -hmm. Right? And like that's the opportunity here for the big change. But it's not going to happen out there. Right. It's got to first happen in here. Right. And so that is that is my guidance is to take a pause and take a breath, because when we can do that, we've opened the door to divine guidance right there, right in that moment. And we become less reliant on our own habits, patterns, constructs, uh, you know, habitual reactions it's like we we've, we've created that space. We've created a gateway for assistance. We've created a gateway for the divine to get in there. And and that I think is part of the problem is we don't let it in. we don't let the divine in. Right. Because we're so freaking busy because we're moving too quick. Yeah. It's true. Because we're doing we're doing Beautiful. We don't have and, to do uh, it. I love that. Open up a portal to the divine and and do not resist what comes in. Yeah, but you're right. Well, or have the courage to follow it, right? To have the courage to follow it. And that's what my book is about. I um, My book is a memoir, a teaching memoir uh, that is the... Uh, chronicling of my journey, leaving corporate America, you know, giving up my retirement plan for the grand divine plan right. and all of the action steps that I walked myself through to get to where I am today um, in a really beautiful, thriving, healthy, joyous place of aliveness. And it's possible for everyone and I walk you through how to do it in my book. And again, if you your need book a little is, bit more guidance, you can give me a call. 
<laughs> original, original wisdom harness the power of the authentic you. I definitely now want to read it. I do have a couple questions for you. So you guys, obviously, uh, DonnaBond.com. Her Facebook is Donna Bond Professional Coaching. Her it, her IG is Donna Bond Coach. Um, so when did you leave the corporate hustle? How long has it been? Yeah, um, I stepped down in 2014. Uh, okay. I had no idea that I was going to be right. doing this work, but I right. I got the divine guidance, which is a really profound story in the book. Um, you know, I just knew. I just knew without a plan or a clue, I just knew. And so I quit my job. I stepped down from um, a big position with the Ritz Carlton Hotel Company. And I hung out a shingle as a marketing consultant because I had 28 years of experience right. in hospitality marketing. I had a lot of contacts that seemed like a way that I could give myself a little bit of more space and freedom. So I really sure. like, I built myself a bridge, Jay. And this is what we have to do. We have to build ourselves a bridge because the ego needs to feel safe. We, right. we have to feel safe. And mm. jumping off of a cliff, you know, it's not advisable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You want to you want to get a net. You want to build a net. And there's ways to do that. Um, and I, I I would love to tell you, like, oh, I had this grand plan and I right. architected out exactly where I was going. That's right. not true. No. What happened was I took a walk in the dark and I would take one step. I would just take one step and then the next step would become illuminated. But that next step couldn't become illuminated until I made the first move. Because when I made the first move, then I changed the landscape of the game, right? right. So everything is dynamic. And we're so fixated on like, oh, I got to have all the steps, line it up from A to Z. I got to know how long it's going to take. What's going to be my return on the investment? You know, blah, 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 blah. I want to know every single thing that could go wrong. Give me the five point plan. What's the recovery? What's the re right. right? I say the hell with all of that shit. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. Take one step and see what becomes available as your next set of options. And we want to stay in action. We want to keep taking steps. And I think this is another barrier to entry for people is they want to know you know, what the step is going to be, right. we have to sort of relinquish that right. and right. be willing to have some new things show up for us. You and I have so many similarities, which I'll share with you off air. It's astonishing. My leaving the corporate, as I call wage slave world was 2012. So just two years before you, same thing. I mean, I was pushed into it and I mean, what happened to me, it was inevitable, but, um, it was, it was, it was, it was a, it was a dark path from a standpoint of like, you know, I was in the dark. I didn't have any idea what was going to happen. But again, as I always say, from entropy comes creation. You have to allow the space for the creation to come in. And until you detach from that idea that you don't have any options, oh my God. You know, which so many people get stuck in that box again, that sandbox, that mental box that this is who I am and this is what I am and this is my ability. I mean, I've seen so many people since I myself got out of it. Obviously, you coach people up for a living, so you see it every day. But it's amazing how people literally create that self talk, that story that defines them. And it's obviously a limiting lack and scarcity mindset because, again, it comes from our upbringing, you know, our parents, their parents, you know. But you broke it. I broke it. Many, many people now are breaking. It's almost a spell, you know, yeah. breaking spells to, you know, become our highest and best persons, you know, the authentic you. Right. I love that. My, my wife used to say, become the best, become the ultimate version of you. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's, that's what you've done. And, you know, there are many people now I would say that are aspiring to do this. So Donna, I really, truly appreciate you coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. Uh, let me just say you guys, for all of you who are not familiar with her book, pick it up. It's obviously amazing after you've watched, if you paid attention to this podcast, which I'm sure you have 
author of Original Wisdom, Harness the Power of the Authentic You. It's at DonnaBond.com. I presume you can also pick it up on Amazon, correct? Yeah, and my Audible is out. My Audible is awesome. online, and I read it. So I was going to say, if it's your voice. All of my emoting and yeah. all of my drama and my high inflections and the whole everything. So it, awesome. it's fun. That's I get awesome. pretty emotional at the end, and I ended up producing it, so I just left it in there. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. And again, I truly appreciate you coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. And obviously for all of you guys, make sure you support the amazing people that do come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Again, go to her website, her Facebook page, and of course her IG. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon. Thank you, Jay. My honor.